Hello students, this is Dr. Dakshayani, Assistant Professor from Department of Zoology, Maharani Science College for Women, Bengaluru. Students, in this session, let us understand about the evolution of brain of frog under comparative account of brain in vertebrates. The contents as follows, introduction, evolution of brain of frog, and its summary. Students, in my previous session, I had explained in detail about evolution of brain in vertebrates as well as evolution of brain of shark under comparative account of brain in vertebrates. As we all know that during the evolution of brain in vertebrates, it had shown that the development of brain in all vertebrates follows the basic structural plan. That is, brains of all vertebrates consists of the three important regions or the parts. It is called as forebrain, midbrain and hindbrain. But its degree of development and differentiation of each part of the brain depends upon the animal in which environment it is living. In this aspect, let us study in detail about the evolution of brain of frog. This slide shows the brain of frog in dorsal wave, in ventral wave as well as the longitudinal section showing all the brain ventricles. Brain of frog. When you see the size and shape of the brain of frog, it is found to be elongated, flattened and bilaterally symmetrical. Means when brain is longitudinally cut into two parts, it results in equal parts. The brain is three times longer than its width. It is whitish in color and it is situated in the bony cranium. The brain of frog is found to be very simple and it consists of the three main parts that is forebrain, midbrain and hindbrain. Brain is very well protected and it is enclosed by the two membranes that is the meninges. A thin inner pia mater and a thick outer dura mater. Between these two membranes it encloses a space and it is filled with cerebrospinal fluid. The first part of the brain is the forebrain. It consists of three components. One is olfactory lobes, the second one is cerebrum and the third one is diencephalon. The olfactory lobes. You can observe in the picture that is picture A and B. The olfactory lobes in the brain, they are placed in front of the cerebral hemispheres that is it is situated right at anterior ends of the cerebral hemisphere and they are slightly separated by a slight constrictions. The olfactory lobes are a smaller they are spherical in shape and they are not much developed when it is compared to shark. And due to this, in frog, they have very poor sense of smell. The parts of the olfactory lobes consists of the olfactory tract and the olfactory bulb which are not much differentiated. And 
This olfactory lobes encloses a small cavity inside and they are called as rhinoceli. The second part of the forebrain is the cerebrum. In frog brain, the cerebrum is divided into two parts that is called cerebral hemispheres that is right cerebral hemisphere and left cerebral hemisphere uh, by a median longitudinal groove. The cerebral hemispheres are larger, elongated, oval and they are narrow in front and broader at behind and the surface of the cerebral hemisphere is smooth, doesn't have any foldings or the fissures and cerebral hemispheres are not divided into lobes. The, dors the ventral surface of the cerebral hemisphere does not possess the neuropore. Neuropore is a small pore through which the first cranial nerve emerges out which connects the olfactory bulbs that is the terminal nerve. This neuropore is absent in case of brain of frog. The wall of the cerebral hemisphere it is called as the cerebral cortex. In frog the development of cerebral cortex it has just had begun it is very thin. The roof of the cerebral cortex is the pallium. It is slightly developed and it is thin and it is better developed it is compared to fishes. The floor of the cerebral hemisphere is called as the carpora striata. It is also better developed when it is compared to fishes. Both the cerebral hemispheres encloses a cavity called as lateral ventricles otherwise it is also called as paraseal and these ventricles communicates with the rhinoceli which are present in the olfactory lobes. The third part of the forebrain is called as the diencephalon. Diencephalon is the last part of the forebrain and it is very short, narrow, present just behind the cerebrum. It is rhomboidal in shape and it is not overlapped by the cerebellum behind. On the dorsal surface of the diencephalon, it possesses the small rounded pineal body with the pineal stalk. But in adults, this pineal body separates and lies above the skull. That is, it is found attached to the inner surface of the skull. The parietal organs are absent in case of brain of frog. The pineal stalk and the pineal body together it is called as epiphyseal apparatus of the diencephalon. On the ventral surface of the brain that is the floor of the diencephalon shows the large medium bilobed projection. It is called as the infundibulum. And as in that of fishes, the inferior lobes and saccus vasculosus are absent in case of frog. Just behind the infundibulum, there is a oval shaped flattened structure called as the pituitary body. And this pituitary body is, is the structure of 
the infundibulum attached with the hypophysis the middle commissure is absent in case of frog only the optic thalami is present in case of frog they are the bundle of nerve fibers which relay the trans um, that is impulses that is it transmits the impulses between the forebrain as and the hindbrain diencephalon encloses a ventricle called as the diocil the roof of the diocil consists of non nervous vascular tissue called as anterior choroid plexus it plays a major role in the production of cerebrospinal fluid that flows between the meninges throughout the brain and spinal cord and the cerebrospinal fluid carries the nutrients as well as oxygen to brain and spinal cord at the same time it acts as a shock absorbent that is it protects the brain and spinal cord from mechanical injuries coming to the mid part of the brain that is called as mid brain this mid brain is a small part of the brain situated between the forebrain and the hindbrain and it acts as a junction to relay the transmission of impulses between the forebrain and hindbrain and it is consists of full of bundle of nerve fibers mid brain consists of the two parts that is the optic lobes and the crura cerebri optic lobes are two in number in case of frog brain they are larger and they are dorso laterally situated they are rounded and they are hollow and these optic lobes encloses a cavity called as the optocele and the two large optic lobes this condition is called as the carpora bijamina and they are not overlapped either by the cerebrum in front or by the cerebellum behind the floor of the brain is called as the crura cerebri it is the bundle of nerve fibers which play a major role in transmission of nerve impulses between the forebrain and hindbrain this crura cerebri is thin in case of brain of frog on the ventral side just in front of the infundibulum the two optic nerves crosses and forms the optic chiasma coming to the hindbrain hindbrain consists of the cerebellum and medulla oblongata cerebellum when you see the shape and size in case of brain of frog the cerebellum is very poorly developed it is very small and it is present in the form of a, a small narrow dorsal transverse band like structure situated just behind the optic lobes and this narrow transverse band like structure could be very clearly observed on the dorsal surface of the brain in case of frog the cerebellum is not well developed hence the members of this class that is amphibia 
shows very noticeably slow moving locomotion and they are sluggish animals and the cerebellum is not showing any fissures or the lobes and it is also undivided structure the surface of the cerebellum is a smooth and it encloses a cavity called as episeal coming to the second part of the hind brain it is the medulla oblongata medulla oblongata is also very smaller in structure it is roughly triangular that is showing broader anterior is broader and gradually tapers posteriorly that is it is conical in shape it is hollow and it is also not covered by the cerebellum and medulla oblongata encloses a cavity that is the fourth ventricle of the brain called as myloceal and the roof of the cavity is made up of non nervous vascular tissue called as posterior choroid plexus it is also plays a very important role in production of cerebrospinal fluid which is flowing between the membranes of the meninges to supply the nutrients as well as the oxygen the restiform body as well as the ventral flexures are absent in case of brain of frog there are 10 pairs of cranial nerves emerges from the brain of frog in this slide observe the the third figure that is c where it shows the longitudinal section showing all the ventricles the olfactory lobes possess the first ventricle called as the rhinoceal which get communicated with the paraventricles which are present in the cerebral hemisphere and these two paraventricles get connected with the third ventricle that is the diocele through a connection called as the foramen of munro and from the diocele the third ventricle that is it get connected with the fourth ventricle which is situated in the medulla oblongata through a connection called as the iter or aqueduct of sylvius through this connection the cavity of the cerebellum that is episeal also get connected along with the optoseal in the optic lobes in brain of frog all the four ventricles are present rhinoceal paraseal diocele and myloceal and the fourth ventricle continues as a spinal canal in the spinal cord the anterior and the posterior choroid plexus produces the cerebrospinal fluid and the cerebrospinal fluid flowing through the ventricles and it flows in the space between the membranes of the meninges and carries the nutrients as well as the oxygen to the brain as well as to the spinal cord the summary of the brain of frog the nervous system in frog is still basically like that of the fishes that means it is very simple in their structure as well as development and differentiation of the parts of the brain where the roof of the cerebral hemisphere that is pallium it's slightly thicker and it is because of the invasion of the 
nerve cells and as a result there is a slight enlargement in the cerebral hemispheres when it is compared to the fishes thereby it shows more complex activities like locomotion hibernation and breeding etc in case of frog the olfactory lobes are smaller in size and they are found fused and because of this they show very poor sense of smell when it is compared to fishes the optic lobes are slightly larger in size and they are the center of all the brain activities like that of the fishes cerebellum in case of frog it is very poorly developed it is very smaller in size and it is represented in the form of narrow transverse band and it is very poorly developed hence it shows poor maintenance of equilibrium body equilibrium and poor maintenance of body balance hence members of this class shows notably slow and sluggish movements medulla oblongata is also found to be very smaller in size and fluxus are absent in case of brain of frog hence brain of frog is found to be very simple and it is straight in their structure students hope you could you could understand the brain of frog let us answer few multiple choice questions for the short recap in frog brain is enclosed in bony cranium chondrocranium or muscular structure or none of this it is enclosed in a bony cranium in brain cerebral roof is called crura cerebri pallium or corpora striata or none of these the roof of the cerebral hemisphere is called as the pallium in brain the cerebrospinal fluid is secreted by anterior choroid plexus posterior choroid plexus or both a and b or crura cerebri the answer is c the cerebrospinal fluid is secreted by both anterior choroid plexus as well as posterior choroid plexus in frog cerebellum is found to be large and undivided large and elongated or narrow and transverse band like or it is small and divided the answer is c in frog cerebellum is very small very poorly developed and it is narrow and transverse band like how many pairs of cranial nerves found in frog brain is it 8 pairs 12 pairs 5 pairs or 10 pairs it's 10 pairs of cranial nerves emerges from the brain of frog these are the few references from books and website thank you